section 6.2 addition and subtraction of rational functions now that we have seen how to reduce these fractions so-called algebraic fractions and we have also seen how to multiply and divide them so in this section we'll see how to add and subtract them but remember when it comes to addition and subtraction either you'll be dealing with fractions with the same denominator or no, also known as common denominators so in that case all you have to do just add up the tops and reduce the fraction or subtract reduce the fraction you'll be on your way however the problem arises when you're adding or subtracting what fractions with unlike denominators that would be like my case two which we'll go over in this video so these kind of fractions, whether it's addition or subtractions, requires LCD, lowest common denominator. In this case, what you're asking uh, when we say what's the lowest common denominator is give me the smallest number that 4 and 3 divides into, or give me the smallest number which 6 and 5 divides into. Of course, I'm sure you all know LCD here is 12, here is 30. So let's go over the case where fractions have what common denominators these guys consider to be easy because all you have to do as i mentioned what uh kind of like put one of the denominators down and uh, kind of like what whether you're adding or subtracting add or subtract the tops however we have done the addition but now we have to reduce the fi uh, the final answer so factor out the top, so that will be x plus 4. And then the common denominator, uh, the common factor is x plus 4. So this guy divides into that guy once. So the final answer is what? 3. So common denominator, no problem, piece of cake. Same thing applies for subtraction. Let's see now, common denominator is x minus 6. But this time I'm supposed to what? Subtract the tops because it's a subtract, right? So we're done with the subtraction, but it, these problems are always have a follow-up uh, instruction, which is like, okay, whether you add or subtract, now reduce your final answer to its lowest term. So on top, I'm gonna factor out a 10, correct? Once again, the common factor showed up. This guy divides into this guy once. So the final answer is what? 10. Okay, more of that here. Common denominator is what? Is x squared plus x minus 6. But now you're supposed to add these two fractions. So you're supposed to add this binomial to that binomial. So that would be like negative 4x plus 6 plus 5x minus 3. Combining the like terms on top, that would give you x plus three correct that's 5x minus 4x is x 6 minus 3 is 3 but the denominator x squared plus x minus 6 factors as x plus 3 times x minus 2 but remember the common factor showed up which is x plus 3 so this guy divides into this guy once so the final answer is 1 over x minus 2 when it comes to subtraction, you really, really have to be careful now. Why is that? Well, when you put the common denominator, which is 4x squared minus 12x minus 4, because you're subtracting, I highly recommend that what you open two set of parentheses with a minus in between. So put the first numerator inside the second uh, first parentheses and the uh, second numerator inside the second set of parentheses. The reason that I insist that you put these guys inside the parentheses, so when it comes to subtracting, so you will not forget that the minus here sign, besides affecting 5x, is all. it also affects what? Negative 4. In other words, it doesn't change the sign of 5x alone. It also changes the sign of what? negative 4. So what happens is up here you get what 7x minus 3 minus 5x plus 4 over 
uh, 4x squared minus 12x minus 7. So now the top is what? 2x plus 1, is it? And the bottom factors, remember, this is one of those problems. I need a box, right? So I split the 4x squared perhaps into uh, what? 2x, 2x, split the 7 into 7 and 1. Do the cross multiplication here. That will be 14x. This will be 2x. Okay, what should I do with 14x and 2x to get negative 12x? I believe this should be negative. That should be positive. So the negative sign transfers over here and the positive sign gets to be attached to the one. So now group the adjacent boxes and your answer is inside these oval shapes. So that will be like 2x minus 7 times 2x plus 1. But remember now, these are common factors. This guy divides into that guy once. So the final answer is 1 over 2x minus 7. Final answer. Do you all see it? Case two is what if you're dealing with fractions with unlike denominators? So these guys require what? LCD. If the denominators happens to be prime, that means those are the what? Uh, type of numbers which are greater than one and divisible by one and themselves only. If that's the case, the LCD is always the multiplication of those two numbers. Once again, if the numbers are prime numbers, those are numbers greater than one, divisible by one and themselves only, then the LCD is just multiplication of these two numbers or product. So what you have to do, now you have to go back and force these denominators look like LCD. How do you do that? You go three goes into 15 five times. So you multiply top and bottom by five here. Remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you gotta do the same thing to the top. Otherwise, that would change the value of the fraction. Five goes into 15 three times. So you multiply top and bottom by three. What was the reason we did all this? So now the denominators look alike. Notice the denominator of this fraction is 15. The denominator of this fraction is 15. So I can simply add up the tops. But the tops is not 2 and 1 anymore. It's 10 and 3. So that would be 10 plus 3. So I would say the answer is 13 over what? 15. Final answer. Okay. Next one. 2 over 7 plus 3 over 21. Okay, 7 is prime, but 21 is not prime, but the factors of what? Uh, 21 happens to be what? 3 times 7. So how do you choose LCD? Well, to choose LCD, this is basically the rule which we have to follow. Factor out each denominator completely, select all different factors, with the highest exponent. So select different. Remember, that means they don't have to be in common anymore. It's exactly opposite of what GCF. In GCF, we had to select common factors with the lowest power. In LCD, we have to choose all different factors. They don't have to look alike. We need to choose everyone out there as LCD. And if the powers don't match, we choose the one with the highest power. If their powers match, then we choose one of the factors, but not both. I will uh, kind of uh, go over those uh, scenarios in my upcoming examples. But right now, notice in this case, three is a one of a kind number because it's different than seven. So that has to be part of your answer times now you have two sevens, but the powers of the sevens happens to be one. So we only select one of these guys, not both. So the bottom line is the LCD is 21, all right? It's not three times 49, it's three times seven. Why? Because remember it says select all different factors with the highest powers. 
if the powers match, like in this case, I got two, seven to the power of first power, seven to the first power, I only choose one of them, not both, okay? If they are identical, choose one. If one has higher power than the other one, choose the one with the higher power, correct? So this guy is like, what, 21? So uh, seven goes into 21 three times. So you multiply top and bottom of this fraction by three. 21 goes into 21 once. So this guy is in pretty good shape. So in reality, I'm adding six to three, which is nine over 21. You reduce this by three. I believe you get three over seven, correct? So that should do it. How about this guy? What would be the lowest common denominator of 9, 12, 20? You know what I'm asking, don't you? Give me the smallest number, which 9 and 12 and 20 divides into. It has to be the smallest number. Okay, smallest number. That's why L stands for least, means smallest. All right. So what do we do? We find the prime factors of 9, which is 3 squared, correct? So this is 3 squared. 12 is what? 4 times 3, but 4 is 2 squared times 3. 20 is 4 times 5, which is 2 squared times 4. So now it's time to find LCD. Let's see now. We have, this is uh, 4 times 5, correct? Sorry about that. So now... Between the twos, I choose either one because they both have powers of two. So I choose one of them, not both. Remember, if the exponents match, choose one, not both. Three, uh, I have two of those, but this guy is three squared, whereas this guy is three to the first. Which one do I choose? The one with the highest power. So... And the five is one of a kind. It gets to be selected. Remember, the catch word here is different. So that means, you know, whatever is inside the boxes, everyone gets to be selected. Nothing should be left behind. However, if the what number is one of a kind, you just write that part of your LCD. If it looks like anything else in any of these boxes, choose the one with the higher power or the highest. And if the powers match, choose either one, but not both. So anyways, the morale of the story is the LCD is four times, nine times five, which is 180. <clears throat> okay, so that would be the lowest common denominator between 9 and 12 and 20, which is 180, because that's 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times uh, 9 is 180. Very good. So now let's find a bunch of LCDs of algebraic what? expressions. Then again, this guy is prime. You know what that means. That means it's not factorable. This guy is prime, it's not factorable. So the LCD is just multiplication of those two factors. 3x plus 3 and x plus 3. So here you have to factor out a 3. So now you have, remember, two boxes. Inside the boxes, 3 is one of a kind. So that part of it, part of your LCD. But now x minus x plus 1 and x plus 3 is what is also prime factor so the product is going to be what lcd so this is the lcd so the lcd is 3 times x plus 1 times x plus what 3 remember if the factors are prime that means they are not factorable then their product is lcd how about x plus 1 and x squared plus 2x plus 1? Before you find the LCD, you need to factor this. When you factor this, you get x plus 1 times x plus 1, which is x plus 1 squared. So now you got two boxes, 
which from these two boxes you need, you need to select LCD. How do I select LCD? Check this out. You got what? Same binomial. Well, which one do I choose? The one with the highest power. So in this case, LCD is X plus one squared. Remember, if I have identical what? Uh, factors, correct? Which one do I choose? I choose the one with the highest power. What about these guys? X squared minus nine and three times X plus three. Well, you need to factor this. That's the difference of two squared, which is X minus three, X plus three. You got a box here. This guy is in factored form, which is three times X plus three. So now you take your shopping bag and go and shop for what? Different items. And if they look alike, you choose one. If they don't look alike, you choose the one with the highest power, correct? So three is one of a kind. So that gets to be part of your LCD. X minus three is one of a kind. That's the only one you got. But as far as what, X plus threes, you got two of these guys, but they both have same powers. Notice it's invisible power of one. You only choose one of these guys, do not choose both. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we have is three times X minus three times X plus three. Once again, if they, if they are one of a kind, they get to be selected as your LCD. If they look alike, choose one. If they look alike and one has more higher power than the other one, choose the one with the what? Higher power. Do you all see it? You think you can remember the rule? I hope so. So let's do the next one. How about X squared plus three X minus 10 and X squared plus X minus six? Immediately factor these guys. And now you got two boxes, correct? And now I'll take your what? Shopping bag and find LCD. Let's see now. X plus five is one of a kind. X minus two, you got two of these guys, one in each box, but they both have same power. So I only select one, not both. And then X plus three is one of a kind factor. So there goes your lowest common denominator, correct? Sometimes the denominators, what? They come in factored form. Anytime you have an expression with a power, that means they are in factored form. Did you know that? How nice is that? So I don't have to factor it anymore. They are in factored form. Well, wait a minute. So which one do I choose as my LCD? You ready? I know. I bet you, you know this guy. Why? Because that's the one with the highest power. As far as the X plus fours are concerned, the power of this guy is one. The power of this guy is three. You choose the one with what? Highest what power. Where did my rule go? Right here. Remember the highest exponent. So LCD is X plus four to the power of what? three because three is greater than one and they look alike what if you got more than two expressions like 3x plus 4 x minus 5 and 3x squared minus 11 x minus 20. well it turns out these guys are prime so this is prime factor so is this guy but this guy is factorable how do you factor this you kind of go okay that's 3x, let's see now, plus 4 times x minus 5. Okay, in case you were wondering how did I come up with that answer? Well, you remember I like boxes, right? So I split this into what? 3xx, split this guy into what? 5 and 4. And then I test drove it to see if I got the numbers in the right spot. So this is 12x, that's 5x. That didn't work, right? Because there is no way I'm gonna get 11 out of this. So I must have messed up. So I'm gonna switch what? 
uh, the five with four. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, okay, what if I put the four here, five there? So three X times five is 15 X. And that's four times X is four X. High in the world, can I get negative 11 out of 15? And what? Four. Well, if you make this negative and make this positive, I think you can get to the promised land because positive four, negative 15, it gives you what? Negative 11. So, uh, you know, group the adjacent boxes. Remember that positive goes and sits in this box, negative goes and sits in this box, and lo and behold, you get this. So now you've got three boxes to choose from, uh, to choose your LCD from, correct? Like so. Let's see now, we're gonna take our shopping bag and shop for LCD. We're gonna buy the best item every what box has to offer. Let's see, as far as the 3X plus fours, they both have same power. I just need one. Why do I need to buy the same item twice? There's no reason. What about X minus five? Well, I got two of those guys, correct? So I choose one. So ladies and gentlemen, the LCD is 3X plus four times what? X minus five. All right. So I think we are ready to wrap this up by doing a whole bunch of problems. Okay. I'm subtracting unlike denominators. What would be the lowest common denominator of 10 and 25? Which number do you know of that 10 and 25 divides into? And it has to be the lowest. My guess is 50. And between X's, I choose what? The one with the highest power. So that's my lowest common denominator, correct? So now I go, how do I change these guys so they will look like 50X cubed? Well, I kind of go, okay, 10X goes into 50X cubed, five times X squared times. So you multiply top and bottom this guy by 5x squared. And how many times 25x cubed goes into 50x cubed? My guess is two times. So you multiply top and bottom of that fraction by two. So that way, when you multiply, you get 50x cubed here, 50x cubed there. So you are good to go. So what is the top now? The top is 45x squared minus 12. So... That would be like what? Oh, what should I do? What should I do? I think this is as good as it gets because if even, let's see now, what would be the greatest common factor of 45 and 12? You might say, oh, how about three? Well, that's good. So that would be like what? 15, is that right? x squared minus 4, correct? But nothing cancels. So even though you have a GCF of 3 on top, but nothing cancels. So I would declare this as my final answer. You see it. What about this guy? x plus 7 over x minus 7. Is that right? Plus 3x minus 4 over x. Remember, both of these denominators are prime. That means they are not factorable. So LCD is product of those denominators. So the LCD of these two is just multiply them out. So question is, how many times X minus 7 divides into X times X minus 7? In other words, what I'm asking you, comparing this denominator to LCD, this is my LCD, remember? What am I missing? I think I'm missing X. So what I like to do is multiply top and bottom of this fraction by X. Okay, next, comparing this denominator to this LCD, what am I missing? Well, it looks like I'm missing X minus seven. 
So I multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by x minus seven. Do you see it? So now I have common denominator x times x minus seven, but now I have to distribute this guy by x, which is x squared plus seven x. And then I have to distribute these two, uh, multiply these two binomials. What would be the answer you say? It's three x squared minus 21x minus 4x plus 28. If you combine the like terms, you get 4x squared, what? Let's see now, that's uh, three, okay, where am I? That's three and that is uh, 18x and then I got 28 over x times x minus seven. Is that right? So I don't think this is going to factor out. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay. Even if I try it, I do a box for the top. I get like what? I don't know. 2x, 2x, 7 and 4. So if you kind of cross multiply, you get 8x here. And here you get 14x. There's no way you're going to get negative 18 out of that. Do you see it? So um, I'm just going to leave that as is because not going to happen, right? Uh, let me just give um, uh, one more try. Like what if I split the 4x square into 4x and x? and then hold on to this guy and say, okay, here is like seven, here is like four, because that's four times seven is 28. And cross multiply, you get what? Seven X, 16 X, then again, I'm not gonna get negative 18. So I'm gonna declare this as my final answer. What about the next one? Then again, these guys are prime, so the product happens to be LCD. What is this guy is missing comparing to LCD? X plus one. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by X plus one. What is this guy missing comparing to LCD? X minus what? Four. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this guy by X minus four. So on top, I'm going to get 4x times x plus 1 plus x plus 3 times x minus 4. So as you can tell, when you're adding or subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, don't expect to get the answer right away. It's going to take a while. Can I cancel any of these? No. Why not? Because the plus sign won't let you. So do not do any cancellation at this point. So do not, do not cancel, okay, at this point. You need to wait a little, right? Because the plus sign won't let you. So what do I do then? Well, remove the parentheses. So that's 4x squared plus 4x. Here, if you do F-O-I-L, you get x squared minus 4x, so that's minus x minus 12 over x minus 4, x plus 1. So notice, as I told you, it's going to take a while, so don't expect to get to the answer right away. Combine the like terms, what do I have? I got five of these guys, then I got three of those guys, then I got negative 12 all over x minus 4 and x plus 1, correct? So now I need uh, to do a box for 5x squared plus 3x minus 12 and hope and pray to God that it would cancel, I mean, factor 5x squared plus 3x minus 12. How about if I split the 5x squared to 5xx and 12 into, let's say, I don't know, 4 and 3. So what is this? This is 15x, 4x, not going to happen, not going to get 3x. Okay, maybe I uh, didn't do it right. How about if I switch three and four? That's going to be 20x, 3x. Not going to get what? Positive 3x out of this. Okay, 
What if I go, I don't know, 5x and x, instead of 3 and 4, why don't I go 6 and 2? Okay, so uh, this is 5x, x. About if I cross multiply, that's 10x and that's 6x. Not going to happen. I'm not going to get 3x out of this. So it looks like I'm pretty much what stuck with this final answer. So there it is. Okay, I tried. I tried my best. It just didn't budge. Just for laughs and giggles, one more 5x and x. But if I switch these guys around, that would be 30x and 2x. You are not going to get 3x out of those guys. So that's it. Here, first you factor this, which is x minus 1 squared. Comparing these two boxes, remember, we choose the one with the highest what? power. So I'm going to choose x minus 1 squared. This guy is in pretty good shape because it looks like LCD, but this guy is not. So I'm missing what? One more x minus 1. Okay, because that's x minus 1 to the first power, but LCD is x minus 1 squared. So you need one more x minus 1. But this guy is in pretty good shape. So once again, especially when you subtract in open two set of parentheses. So the first parentheses is 3x squared minus 3. The second parentheses, or I should say brackets, is x times x minus 1. Okay, no cancellation. So once again, do not, do not cancel at this point. Why? The minus sign won't let you. So what do I do then? Well, distribute, remove all these parentheses, 3x squared minus 3. Remember, this is x squared minus x, but the minus changes the signs. And now combine the like terms on top, which is 2x squared, what? Plus x minus 3 over x minus 1 squared. I hope I did that right. That's 2x squared, then there is an x, then there is a negative 3. See if you can factor this guy. 2x, x, let's see now. You ready? Uh, 3, 1, so uh, plus negative. Well, what do you know? It factored. So remember, you kind of do a box. You put a little 2x here and x here. And you put like a 3 and a 1. So that's 2x. That's 3x. What do I need? I need positive x. So I need positive negative. That's positive negative. Group the adjacent boxes. And lo and behold, you get the top in factored form. But that's over x minus 1 squared. OK. At this point, we are allowed to cancel. Now it's okay. Why? There is no plus or minus between the parentheses. So one of these guys cancels with one of these guys, leaves you with x minus 1. So the final answer, ladies and gentlemen, is 2x plus 3 over x minus 1. Final answer. Sometimes they give you a number, just a number like four, and they want you to subtract this algebraic fraction from it. Okay, here is the wrong way to do it. Okay, this is what uh, some students do. They go, okay, that's easy. That's just four minus x plus one over x squared plus three x minus 10. Wrong. You got to give a denominator of one. You got to factor this. And you got to find the LCD. So if you did a problem and it looked like it was way too easy to get an answer, chances are it's not right. Because these problems take time. So first thing first, convert the whole number into fraction. And then you need to uh, kind of like what? Factor this guy out. 
So LCD is what? X plus five times X minus two. So guess what? This guy doesn't look like LCD. So you need to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by LCD. What was it? X plus five x minus 2 x plus 5 x minus 2 but this guy is in pretty good shape because it looks like lcd so what do we have remember you have a minus remember i told you have what a brackets or something so that way you won't uh, miss the minus sign here okay so what do we have in the numerator on the numerator of the first fraction four times x plus five times x minus two. What do we have here? We have just x minus one. Okay, so how would I multiply these guys? Well, four times x plus five times x minus two. First, you multiply these binomials. You get x squared, what, five x, and that's three x minus 10. Then you distribute the four. That was like F-O-I-L, foilet. So you get 4x squared plus 12x minus 40. So 4x squared, what did I say? 12x minus 40. Remember I told you put a parenthesis on time, especially when you're subtracting, because this minus sign gets to be distributed by x and negative 1 as well. So here I get negative x plus 1 all over x plus 5, x minus 2. See that? So now you combine the like terms. What do you come up with? You will come up with, what, 4x squared. What is this? Plus 11x. What is this? Uh, minus 39 over x plus 5 times x minus 2. Question, does this factor? I have no idea. Well, let me just uh, give it a try. 4x squared, I'm going to factor it as 4xx. 39, I'm going to split it as 13 times 3. See if this works. What is this? 12x, 13x. Is there any way I can get 11 out of this? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so that that went to nowhere. How about, oh, about 2x, 2x. How about 3 and 13? So that's like, what, 26? And this is 6. Not going to give you, what, 11x. So I'm just going to, you know, say, hey, you know what? That's as good as it gets. All right. Now you have three fractions. The first two are subtracted, and the result gets to be added to this nasty fraction. These guys are prime, so they do not factor. So you write them as you see them. But x squared plus 4x minus 21 factors as x plus 7 times x minus 3. So now you've got three boxes to choose your LCD from. So as far as the X plus sevens, they both have same powers. So you choose one, not both. And as far as the X minus threes, they both have same powers. Remember when there is no power, that means there is an invisible one here. Okay. Remember we said if the powers match, you choose either one, but not both. So don't choose x minus 3 twice, just once. Okay, so this guy requires me to multiply top and bottom by, notice x minus 3 is missing. Okay, here x plus 7 is missing, so multiply top and bottom by x plus, what did I say, 7. This guy is in pretty good shape because it looks like LCD. So remember what I said, you put what? three, what, uh, one set of parentheses, one set of brackets, and a set of parentheses. Inside the first set of parentheses, you got x times x minus three. As a matter of fact, let's convert that to brackets, this guy. The next bracket has what? 
2x plus 1 times x plus 7. And the last parentheses is 3x squared plus 20x minus what? 35. Okay, once again, no cancellation at this point. Why? Because this minus and that plus sign won't let you. Okay, it is just like this. 5 plus 6 over 6. Can I cancel these guys and say the answer is 5? No, you can't do that. What if I got subtraction, 3 minus 2 divided by 3? Can I cancel these guys, say the answer is negative 2? No, we can't do that. That's why there is no cancellation here, correct? So what do I do? Remove all the what? Brackets and parentheses first. This guy is what? x squared minus 3x. Okay, this guy is minus, do the foiling, what you got here? I got 2x squared, 14, so that's 15 plus 7. And then I got the last, what? Uh, trinomial. Is that right? So do you see why I inserted what brackets and parentheses? So that way, when you get to this point, removing the parentheses, so you won't forget, hey, this minus sign gets to be distributed by everything inside the parentheses. That's why I insist that you put these guys inside the brackets and parentheses. All right, let me just double check this. So that's 2x squared, 14, 15. Yes, it's okay. So we get x squared minus 3x minus 2x squared minus 15x. Notice I'm changing the signs. Minus 7, 3x squared, 26x minus 35 over x plus 7, x minus 3. Look for like terms and combine. So combine these guys first. What you got there? I got four, so that gives you two of these, because that's four minus two is three. Now combine x's. What you got there? You got negative 18, is that right? And 26, is that right? So that gives you positive, what? Uh, eight, x. And then the numbers, these guys, and that gives you negative, what, 42, is it? <clears throat> is that right? I hope so. So now over x plus 7, x minus 3. You all see it. So we are done with, what, combining the fractions. But wait a minute. What about this guy? And reduce your answer to its lowest terms. So on top, I have one of those special trinomials, which requires a little bit of a boxing. So that's 2xx, 42, what would that be? Six times seven. Notice six cannot go here, because if you put six here, then six and two will have what? GCF. Adjacent boxes should not have GCF. That's why on purpose, I put the six over here. So do the cross multiplication, you got 7x, 12x. Is there any way I can get what? 8x. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see now. <clears throat> okay, no, that didn't quite work. So, um, hmm. uh, oh, I see what I'm gonna do. Sorry about that, guys. I see what the problem is. These guys, they all have two in common, so I gotta factor that out, like so. Sorry about that, I didn't, uh, I missed that. So this is the GCF between these guys. Before you do any boxes, make sure there's no common factor. Well, there is, two is in common, so that leaves you with x squared plus four x minus what? 21 over x plus 7 times x minus 3. But now this guy factors as x 
plus seven times x minus three and x plus seven, x minus three, correct? Sorry about that little glitch there, sorry. So now, so now it is okay to cancel at this point. Why? There is no plus or minus between all these parentheses on top. Guess what? This guy goes into that guy first. That guy goes into that guy first. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is a simple, humble two. And that's pretty much the answer for this problem, which started with a big old royal mess, but ended up with such a simple answer, which is unbelievable. Thank you.